Everyone, I hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful week. This week we read Parshas Lech Lecha, and at the end of last week's parsha, and certainly in this week's parsha, we are introduced to Avma Vinu. And in the beginning of the parsha, we are told he's given a command: Lech Lecha Me'artzcha, leave your land, leave the land of your upbringing, leave the land of your father, and go to that land, to Eretz Yisrael, that land that I will show you. How old is Avram? He is seventy-five years old, and that's how we're introduced to him as an older man in his 70s. Why is it that the Torah waits to share with us about Avram to this relatively later stage of his life? There's so much that the Midrashim fill in for us about what happens to Avram in his early stage of life. We are told in beautiful, beautiful Midrashim, one we shared last week in our discussion last week, but a beautiful Midrash, for example, Bracious Rabbi says that Avram is traveling the world and he says, there must be a creator. It has to be. There must be a God. He's over me, makam la makam, vira'ah. And he brings a mashal. Imagine you see this tremendous, tremendous palace. And you don't see anyone living in there, but it's gardened and it's illuminated. There's lights. There seems to be something going on. Would you not think there is a Baal Habira? There is someone who built that palace, who dwells in that palace. There's some great king who is in charge of that palace? Certainly. So you look at this world and you understand, of course, there must be a manhig, a leader, a Baal Habira. In fact, the Rambam in the beginning of Hilchos Avados Chachavim shares with us a history of the world. The pagans and the Avodah Zarah of that day and how Avma Vino looks and sees and observes. He looks at the stars, at the sun, at the moon, at the magnificence of the universe and he understands there must be a God and he starts to share his message with the world. We read the Medrash last week at the end of Parshas Noach that Avram destroys his father's idols and he's brought to Nimrod and he has a philosophical battle with Nimrod about the nature of the world, what governs the world, the powers of the world and ultimately he's thrown into a Kivshan Ha'esh and he walks out miraculously unscathed. Why does the Torah not share with us these dramatic narratives? So fascinating. Avram's philosophical quest, his battle with Nimrod, all of these undertakings, why are these omitted from the narrative of the Chumash? We only meet Avram Avinu with the command of Lech Lecha Me'artzecha. So actually my wife suggested, this is actually a question that's asked by the Ramban, my wife suggested that perhaps the Torah is telling us a very, very fundamental message. You see, the truth is that the stories of Avram's philosophical quest, his journey towards monotheism, really fascinating, really interesting, and certainly something that captures our imaginations. But at the end of the day, it does not define our core relationship with the Bore Olam. Our core relationship with the Bore Olam is that Hashem is a mitzvah, and we are mitzvim, we are commanded, and we have mitzvahs, and we have to act in accordance with Ratzon Hashem. That's the core of our relationship with Hashem. That's the core of Yiddishkeit. We are a behavior-centered religion. Sure, emuna is critical, bitachon, faith, sure. But at the end of the day, if it's not manifested in performance, in avoda, in behavior, there's something fundamentally missing. And therefore, perhaps, when we are introduced to the first Jew, the first Jew, so the way we're introduced to the first Jew is vayomer Hashem el Avram lech lecha me'artzara. He's given a mission. He's given a command. He's given something that he has to accomplish and achieve. And of course, what does he do? Vayelech Avram. He actually goes in and does so. I pulled out from a couple of years back, I found an article that was written by a conservative rabbi, and he's lamenting after the Pew Report came out, which identified the weakness of the conservative movement, the reform movement. So this conservative rabbi, he writes and he says, that Judaism is a behavior-centered tradition. He's speaking to his constituents where they don't really keep mitzvahs very well. And he writes, and he's trying to be mechazek, his constituents. 
Being an ethical person while central to Judaism is not uniquely Jewish. Fighting for social justice while central to Judaism is not uniquely Jewish. Wearing tefillin, praying in Hebrew, Torah study, kashrus, Jewish communal adherence and activities, these things are activities that keep the core of the tradition alive. And as Jews have left the latter, meaning the behaviors, the mitzvot, and profess the former, ethics, and the like, more general concepts, adherence starts to weaken. And that's a fundamental idea. Orthodox Judaism, with its focus on mitzvot, shmiras ha-mitzvot, Talmud Torah, Shabbos, Taras HaMeshpacha, that's really what it's all about. That's what gives us our endurance, and ultimately, that's the legacy of Avram Avinu. That's what he brought to the world. That's why the Torah emphasizes the Asara Nisyonos, Shinis Nasa Avraham, and that's why we emphasize his mitzvot, Lech Lecha Meyartzecha. In fact, at the end of this week's parasha, he's given another mitzvah, the mitzvah of bris mila. A mitzvah for an elderly man requires a tremendous amount of sacrifice, and the Medrash says something amazing. The Torah writes, Be'etzma yom azem, the middle of the day, Nimo Avra. And the Medrash is bothered. Why does it say a passive, this language of Nimo, as opposed to Mal Avraham? That he performed the Mila. Why does it say Nimo? So the Gemara, the Medrash has two positions. This is Bracious Rabba Mem Zayin. Amar Rabbi Abba Bar Kahana. Why Nimo? So Hirgish, he felt it. When it's tired, there was pain involved. This was not an easy mitzvah for him to do. And because he had this, did the mitzvah and he experienced the pain. So he got double schar for the mitzvah and for the mesiris nefesh. And then the Medrash cites Amar Levi, no. It doesn't say Mola Avraham, it says Nemo to tell you that when he was about to perform the mitzvah, Bodak, and he saw he was already Mahal. He was no Lad Mahal. He didn't actually have to perform the mitzvah. And the Medrash concludes and says, Amar Rav Barachia. Barachia says about this position of Rav Levi, Shakrana, you're a liar. Kazbina'at, you're giving us deceitful information. Rather, the first shot is correct. Hirgish Vinitztair. He felt it and it was pain. Why the passionate, emotional response? Shakrana, Kazbina, you're saying lies. Okay, can I machlaik? Because we have machlaik with every daf of Gemara. But why this passion? Shakrana, Kazbina. So Harav Yonason Sachs Shlita has in his new Sefer, and I've heard this from him a number of times, he says the reason is because we have a principle, of course, Maisa Avos Simen Labanen. And the reason Rav Brachia is so passionately against is because the Midos of the Avos were implanted into the genetic code of the Jewish people. And he cites a Gemara Masech HaShavaz Tav Kuf Lama. Listen to this Gemara. Rav Shimon ben Elazar Omer, Kol mitzvah shemosu Yisrael al atzman, I'm sorry, Kol mitzvah shemosu Yisrael atzman aleyem, lemisa b'shas gzeras malchus, mitzvahs that we were most in nefesh for, kegon, avodas kochavim, not succumbing to avodas zara and bris milah, adayin hi muchzekes bahen, mitzvahs that we had to be most in nefesh to fulfill. Under dire circumstances, under persecutions and holocausts, those mitzvahs, we adhere to in a very, very strong way. There are other mitzvahs which we didn't have to be most in effort for. And notice that Mara says, Kegon tefillin. So that's a little bit weak in our hands. There were certain mitzvahs that we always, through the ages, had to be most in effort for. And we did. And under dire circumstances, even today in Europe, where they want to abolish Brismila, we're most in effort for the mitzvah. Communities where they couldn't fulfill mitzvahs. Bris Mila was always done in Israel. There's an organization that gives new olim, older men, bris Mila, and people are most in Nefesh at ages that it's hardly comfortable to have a bris Mila, and we're most in Nefesh for this mitzvah. And it's strong in our hands. Other mitzvahs, I find we educate youth today and tefillin, unfortunately, alas, eh, we don't, uh, we're not as, our, our children are not as strong in the midst of tefillin because there wasn't this historic mysterious nefesh. And perhaps the pshat is, the Rabbeinu Brachi could not 
sustain the fact that, oh, no, the shot was, as Rav Levi says, he noticed, Avram did, that he was already mochel, because that meant he fulfilled this mitzvah without Mesir's nefesh. No, no, that's untenable. That's not possible, because the, the ages of the Jewish people, through pogroms, through holocausts, through persecutions, they kept on doing this mitzvah. They kept performing, they kept acting, they kept doing. And that highlights and that indicates that this value of Mesiris Nefesh was embedded. And it was because Avram had Hirgish, he felt it in its tire, that implanted in our genetic code the notion of Mesiris Nefesh for mitzvahs generally and certainly for the mitzvah of Brismila. See, that's the legacy of Avram. And that's perhaps our, mis- our, our mission. We are a behavior centered religion. It is about minion three times a day. It is about performing acts of chesed for our fellow man and certainly our fellow Jew. It is about Birchas Amazon Asher Yotzar. It is about Talmud Torah. It is about, that's our relationship with Rebbe Moshe The monotheistic philosophical quests are so fascinating, but that, not, that is not what defines us and that's not what gives us the endurance to achieve under exceptionally dire circumstances. That's the message of our introduction to Abma Vinu, a message that we should heed very well. Have a wonderful Shabbos Kodesh.